Good day students of quantum mechanics. Our previous lesson was about the free particle. We found out it was easy to solve mathematically, but for us to draw all these physical interpretations, it required a bit of work. So we're going to move swiftly along to another problem. The problem we're going to deal with today is called the potential step. The potential step is basically the, a sudden increase in potential as the particle moves to another region. So we're going to solve that today, see what we can learn from it, and you know, see where we can go on from there. Alright, the potential step is given by uh, Vx in terms of x is equals to 0 for x less than 0 and V0 for x greater than 0. So as the particle is moving in from this region, okay, the potential step, I graphed it out over here. As the particle is in this region, the potential is equal to 0. And as it moves along swiftly to the region over here, there's a sudden increase in potential to V0. So we can also use all these hand waving arguments to see what the picture is classically because later, you know, when we move into the quantum mechanic picture, all right, you know, things we can start to see why you know things are a bit unusual. So what is it classically? What will happen classically? Well, we know that the momentum of the particle that's given over here is 2me and square root of that. All right. Again, we say the particle has an energy. The energy is e. And then as it'll move to this region, the momentum will decrease because of the potential over there as 2me minus v0. And uh, yeah, square root of that, right? So the momentum of the particle in this region is given by this over here. Now, as you can see, there's a decrease in momentum, but the momentum is still positive. So, you know, classical mechanics tells us that as the particle starts in this direction and moves towards here, Sudden decrease, in mo sudden decrease in momentum, however, we can also conclude that all the particles will be transmitted over, okay? The potential is not greater than the energy, so there will be total transmission of particles, a classical mechanical picture, okay, as it moves from this region over here. Um, if you want to know, this is actually called a, a simple scattering problem, right? So that is the picture classical mechanics, right? And you know, we know that there's nothing unusual about it. But remember, in quantum mechanics, I still talk to you about at this point where there's a sudden increase of potential, something funny happens, right? We don't know what that funny thing is, right? But we can just say that something funny happens. And today is about investigating what this funny behavior is. Something, fun, something funny happens when the potential suddenly increase, increases to V0, right? So we want to understand or let's see what this funny thing is. Um, so we move swiftly along and we're going to use the apostolate number 5 and it also goes down to solving the time independence shown in the equation. So the behavior of the particle is regulated by showing the equation at these two regions and we want to solve them. So from the time independence shown in the equation, which is given by this over here, all right, we want to solve it. We will isolate the case for the energy greater than V0. Remember again, the method, the general method is that we need to isolate these energy values. We will assume for now that the energy of the particle is greater than V0, which is basically the level over here. If the energy drops to below V0, something a different thing happens altogether. It's a different ballgame altogether. So we need to isolate that case separately, which is what I will do in due course. So assume that the energy is greater than V0, right? And then after that, what is it again? We will break um, the Schrodinger equation, the time independent Schrodinger equation, and solve it separately for different regions. So for the region for x less than 0, which is the region over here, we will solve the time independent Schrodinger equation. We will see that the potential is equal to 0. So what we are left with is this uh, minus h bar squared uh, 2m, the second derivative in terms of x of the wave function psi x plus, uh, sorry, equals to energy uh, psi x. Then I can also say that we want to rearrange this so that we get the second derivative and the function psi on one side, zero on the other side. I can bring the e over. So when I bring the e over, I get something like that and I'll get um, zero, okay? And then after that, I'll multiply by uh, 2m minus 2m divided by h bar squared. Because what I want to do is that I want to uh, eliminate this coefficient and then really um, leave all the constant terms for the psi x, okay? I mean, you will see why very soon. When I do that, I'll get a plus because I'm minus, I multiply by minus, I get a 2me and divided by h bar squared. And this is obviously psi x multiplied by psi x. The coefficient here gets reduced. So, once we are left with this, we will see that this takes one of the usual forms. What form does it take? Well, the form that it takes is the second derivative of psi x uh, plus k1. Okay, we'll put a k1 because there are two different regions. k1 squared psi x equal to 0, where k1 is equal to, k1 squared is equal to 2me divided by h bar squared. 
right? So basically, this takes this form, and then the reason why I want to do that is because once I take this form, immediately, write down the solutions for the wave function. We know as it takes this form, plus k1 is positive, the solutions for psi is given by this over here, all right? You see, that it's a linear de dependent, uh, it's a linear combination of e to the i k1x and e to the minus i k1x, where k1 is given by that, so I just take the square root of that. So that is two. And once you rearrange the time independent showing the equation to one of these forms, you can immediately write down the solutions. Now, if I were to do the same for the other region where x is greater than zero, what I'll ultimately get is e minus v naught because basically the potential stays here. So I bring e the other side. Okay, so it's um, e minus v naught because I multiply by this thing again, this uh, minus two m divided by h bar, and I'll get equal to zero. All right. Now, what can I say? I can say that E minus V naught is again positive from the condition over here. Uh, yeah, from the, the, the case of E naught greater than zero. We know that E minus V naught is positive. I can also again conclude that 2M times E minus V naught divided by H bar squared is positive. I'll write it again in this form, but this time it will take a K2 squared. Remember, different regions, so this constant is different. Uh, K2 is equal to E minus V naught. Uh, K2 squared is given by that. And then again, same form because of a plus. Immediately write down the solutions. The solutions for region 2 is psi subscript 2 is equal to a linear dependent, a uh, linear combination of e to the i k2x and e to the minus i k2x. And k2 is given respectively by that. So there we go. We have already solved the time independent showing the equation, which should be a fairly straightforward process for now because it's about rearranging the showing the equation to get one of those forms. And then we're left with this. Well, we need to take some time to look at these solutions to really get to tell us what they mean. Now, I want to mention again that due to de Broglie's hypothesis, the solutions of the Schindler equation describes the wave function of the particle. Remember again, particle needs to show particle-like behavior, wave-like behavior. So these solutions that we have on the board describes its wave-like behavior. And also using, you know, just certain uh, rules of wave theory, all right, we can draw what these solutions mean in the context of the picture over here, all right, in the context of what we have sketched as the potential to be.